Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um. Good morning. Good afternoon. And uh, good evening. All depends the part of the world you are joining us from. I am Miles Chica Austin, and of course. Uh, we are here once again to grow. Uh, yesterday we we paused to a point because at a time we couldn't drive on, owing to the fact that there was uh, a bigger IPOB activities out here. In Out the United States, and we felt it paramount to to slow down in respect to our event of yesterday. And I believe you are getting us loud and clear. I believe you are receiving us um, as much as you can, because there are a couple of things we couldn't discuss yesterday because of the broader activities, the bigger activities ongoing in the United States. And we couldn't uh, talk about, uh, or should I say, we couldn't round up the program of yesterday. But we're here this evening to do justice to that as much as we can, uh, asking God to be on, by our side. So this evening we are talking about Politics of now and Biafran question. Politics of now and Biafran question. You know, um, I think um, so many events are playing out. And So many, so many events are playing now. Please, you, you help us to share this program so that we can have a whole lot of people to, to listen to us. But I believe I'm being received loud and clear. I believe I'm being received loud and clear, and we move. So there are a lot of things happening, or should I say, is a, a socio-political development that are, you know, taking place, taking shape. And of course, it, ha it is having a multi-dimensional front. The essence of us talking about this is because people tend not to understand the issue of social evolution issues of social development and what and how a responsible movement or responsible people should maximize every single development. For your information, I, I had people, I had people making this assertion that uh, those who were here earlier before now in the struggle for Biafran restoration seem to have, you know, moved into discussing or supporting a particular, you know, um, candidate in the ongoing political activities. I've had people say that, I've had people um, now giving such narrative. But one thing I would want us to understand, and it's very, very important that, that each and every one of us understand the reality of it. What is that thing? 
in every social political development, you have the active minds and you have the passive minds. I'm going to explain. In anything that is evolving, in anything that is happening, in any occurrence, or should I say, in any development, you will have the individuals who are into that development, owing to the fact that they felt this is a trending issue, or this is what people are talking about. And there are people who are actively involved in that project. So, to those who, under, who don't understand some social development, when they see the passive minds, I'm talking about those minds who are not fully, you know, uh, committed to the project. When they see them switching over, the subjective minds will start making assumption that the totality of individuals in that project are switching over. Me on individual scale. I I respect people's political choice. I respect people's decisions. It is their right. But what is not true in the whole scenario is for you to say, because Mr. A, who doesn't understand what he joined earlier, is freaking out, means that Mr. B, we also freak out. This is this is where people are really getting it wrong. And in course of this program, we are going to talk about a whole lot of issues so that people understand the psychological disposition of a people. You see, when you don't understand the mental disposition of a people, trust me, you will have a whole lot of things poorly narrated, poorly submitted, poorly interpreted. You really need to understand the sociological disposition of a people, how the people think, how they react over an issue. Then you can now appreciate your own right strategy to harness every single opportunity. Mazi Francis Wafford, So you must understand this, and this is where most of us, especially those of us in this struggle, don't understand it. Now, we are coming to the current political development. And make no mistake about this, whether you like it or not, Nigeria has deeply been embedded in ethnic politics. Let nobody deceive you that there is no ethnic correlation of political tribe in Nigeria. It has been there. And how has this political permutation been? It has been the Fulani is hiding under the umbrella of Northern agenda, which is false, lies, and deception versus our, you know, uh, Southwestern brethren, believing that whatever they are going to do, in every manipulation they are going to manipulate among themselves, they are going to make sure that the evil man is excluded. That has been the general picture of Nigerian political space. Make no mistake about that. That is reality. As such, this moment we are discussing this program, it has been the permutation. It has been 
the Fulanis and the Yorubans political gains. And that system has deeply been entrenched to a point that both the Fulanis and the Yorubans don't need to deny or exclude the Igbo man. Rather, they have so much consolidated a system that they just have to use the Igbo man to exclude the Igbo project or interest. And that's why most of you have not taken time to ask questions. Questions like this. Dave Omahi, Hobos or the Morphy Mo State and not the rest of them. Few months ago we are shouting, it is our turn. It is our turn. Why is it that immediately they were excluded, immediately they were denied, immediately they were mesmerized in their various political parties? Why is it that the same people who we are shouting is our turn, is our turn? Who we are shouting, where is justice? The same people are also fighting their own brother who desires to also attain the same height in another platform. So you can now understand the level of mental servitude they have consolidated on the ground. So it was politically correct so to say, are the passive political thinking. It, will, it, it, you know, it is a political correctness for an Igbo man to sabotage his fellow Igbo man. In fact, it is a sign of contact that an Igbo man should take a contract from Kano or Lagos in order to destroy his own brother, political interest. That has been that way. And every single one of them subscribed to that. Every Igbo politician or every Nigerian politician of Igbo extraction subscribed into that. Yes, none of them is, is excluded. The concept of servitude, they were so subjugated in a way that they have accepted it as an act of faith to be slaves. So if you see any single one of them today trying to gather some level of momentum, trying to gather some level of courage, is going to the fact that IPOB, through her blood, through her, you know, undeniable sacrifices, have shaken Nigeria to her foundation. And today, these individuals you're seeing having voices are riding on the sacrifices of IPOB and the most especially Mazen Namdeka. But does that mean in any way that their so called uh, political, uh, should I say, it? I'm very careful with my language, but does in any way mean, does it in any way mean that? Their political voyage, irrespective of who is involved, is their political voyage worth sacrificing the golden project for freedom? Let's be sincere, let's be objective as much as we can. Is their political drive? Is it what destroying? Is it what abandoning? Is it what gently 
the drive for self-determination. This, you see, I always say to people, any people or a group of people who love a comfortable path to success are bereft of ideas. If you think, let's see if this will be an easier way to whatever you want to achieve, you will definitely, you know, get what we call shipwreck. And that is exactly what most people are doing today. They believe that the, the, the path at which IPOB is going is most, much expensive, much costly, and of course, much demanded. So therefore, they believe that with the you know, subscription of subscription to certain political movement, that that would be an easy, easy way for, you know, a shortcut to their, to the realizations of their, realization of their illusions. But they failed to understand, they failed to understand that even the part they think is going to be easy, is definitely not going to be easy. The part they, 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 they think is an easy part. The fact to understand is not going to be easy. It might end up, you know, being a part that the primordial forces will do everything to frustrate it. And because majority of subscribers to this political drive are people of fantasies, illusions. They won't have what it takes to drive it home. Of course. IPOB has already mastered and uh, evolved herself through pains, penuries, sacrifices. IPOB has accepted it as a norm. towards whatever she's driving to. So you, you, you don't threaten IPOB with anything because already she has been so committed in sacrificing anything in order to make sure her voice is heard and her right for self-determination is granted. But how many of these people who are into, you know, uh, uh, you know, contemporary political fantasies and illusions, how many of them are going to be committed when they demand for higher prices are called upon? These are things people need to ask themselves the question. Because for information, we are having a very serious, serious issues. Um, to be honest with you, we are very, having a very serious issues. And those who don't understand how things evolve are, are going to be you know, stripped off. Trust me. They are going, definitely going to be stripped off. Whatever political movement that people tend to see as a trendy one can never be a substitute for our demand for self-determination. To be honest, whatever political movement, and as a matter of fact, that we are agitating, that we are demanding for self-determination does not mean other activities in Nigeria cannot be going on. People should get it correct. 
But will those activities stop the self-determination? The answer is no. The answer is absolutely no. That is just the way it is. The answer is no. And until people understand this, the better. So, back to the contemporary political developments and various issues happening. You see, IPOB has shaken the foundation of this country, no doubt about it. And IPOB have, in a practical term or terms, questioned various primordial positions, various, you know, primordial consensus against the Eastern people. IPOB has put that primordial consensus into question. And I'm going to explain to you how. IPOB has, in course of years, achieved a whole lot of popularity despite the excessive state clampdown on her. She has been pressing despite various conspiracies, various uh, covert operations to undermine her. She has been moving on. And when you have such a movement in place, when you have such resolute people in place, it calls for careful management of whatever their positions are. And that's exactly what is happening. I want every single one of us who is watching this program to see IPOB as the centrality of everything you're seeing happening in Nigeria State. Every single decision or decisions that is taken today or that is going to be taken ahead IPOB is at the centrality of it. The consciousness of the fact that IPOB has not been eradicated or removed from the scene is putting a whole lot of actors into consciousness of how, what, where, and when we are going to do whatever we are going to do. And like I always tell people here, I always tell people, for those who care to know, and of course for those who, who choose to, you know, fend ignorance, good luck. But I always tell people who care to know that, as far as IPOB, as far as IPOB is concerned, As far as, as far as IPOB is strongly existing, those who believe that Nigeria belongs to them are in a serious panic on the right decision to take. You see, in life, and as far as history is concerned, Every single thing people celebrate today is as a result of accumulated social developments. I want you to understand that. If you are celebrating freedom in America in 2022, it's as a result of the fact that people stood against the colonial powers in 17, oh sorry, 18th century AD in the United States. I want people to, to understand the place of chronological, chronological development and of course which views of chronological result. 
that there is a place today called, for instance, State of Israel, is because in 1970 or before 1970, people agitated. People asked for homeland. People asked for settlement. People asked to be established. And from 1914, if I'm not mistaken, 1970, yes, if I'm not mistaken, from the point before declaration was made till now, there are interconnected events that gives birth to what we see today as the state of Israel. And the same way applies to whatever you're seeing today happening in Nigeria is because from 2012, a certain group of people stood up and said, we are saying no to this. And because they maintain consistency from 2012 to today, a lot of things are being shaped. I want people to understand that. You see, because the worst thing I have seen in, most, in the life of most people is that people discuss issues from today. Or should I say, it's going to the fact that majority of us, we are not exposed to the rich, you know, ornaments of history. Because if we do, we should understand that our actions and inactions of yesterday modeled today. And our actions and inactions of today is definitely going to model tomorrow. They are so interconnected that you cannot separate the two. Just because somebody gave birth to your father, that's why you existed. If your father was not giving birth to you, I don't think the, 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 the question of you existing will be there. And the same way it applies to the contemporary development. Every single thing they are trying to do, they are trying to work out, they are trying to man manipulate, are geared towards how do we manage the IPOB's agitation. You see, IPOB has quite evolved. She has, she has faced a whole lot of, you know, uh, obstacles. She had faced, a, she has faced a whole lot of state-sponsored maneuverings. <coughs> Excuse me, and she is quite surviving every single one of them. And I want to tell you, every single day IPOB survives is a concern, not just to the Nigerian state, but to a lot of international actors. I will explain to you. I always try to tell people something I said to people who care to watch or who care to listen. No country would want a group, an opposing group, to exist longer. I will tell you why. No country would want an opposing ideological entity or group existing within her. The reason is this. You see, every country has an enemy, no matter how she claims to be, you know, a neutral state or a neutral actor. Every country has an enemy. Either enemy she recognizes or enemy she does not recognize. It's just the way. As far as nation state politics is concerned, some countries are either political enemy, economic enemy, military enemy, 
or any other form, or even geopol uh, geopolitical enemy or a geographical enemy. That is just the way it is. It's a natural sequence. There's nothing you can do about it. And there is no country on earth that does not have other countries that wish her good, bad, and ugly. Make no mistake about that. And because of that reality, because of that existential reality, no country wants an opposing ideological group existing within her. Same applies to Nigerian state. Why Nigerian state is doing everything she's doing to undermine, to stop, to balkanize, to put confusion, to you know, to 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 to, to bring the antis of destruction or what we call an uh, implosion when something has internal burst. Why Nigerian state and by extension some foreign actors want to get IPOB imploded is because they understand that the more IPOB exists, the more she becomes a point of attraction to enemies of Nigeria. Enemies of Nigeria might want, I use the word might, want to reach out to IPOB. Or my want to sell IPOB, you have fought quite long for your freedom, we want to give you support. This is just the way it is. And for the fact that Nigerian government for over a decade had tried all she could to stop IPOB to no avail, she had tried every single you know, machinations to undermine IPOB, it seemed none is working. Also by extension, those countries that have interest in Nigeria, make no mistake, but Nigeria is just an outlet. A lot of international actors come here, take whatever they want, and get out unaccountably. And they also dump whatever they want to dump unaccountably. So when you have a such, when you have such a polarized entity, when you have such, you know, society that lacks control and you know you are heavily benefiting from such destabilized environment you would do everything to encourage her sustainability it's natural thing it's all about interest i used to tell some of us i said when you understand the politics of interest definitely you'll be matured you won't be you know hit here and there by events happening around because you first of all look at, is your interest protected? Is it, interest is beyond sentiment. Interest is beyond emotional drive. Interest is beyond illusions. Interests are well calculated policies which are geared towards actualizing at all costs. You frame out your interests and you pursue it vigorously in any way you could. So, the likes of Britain wouldn't want to lose Nigeria. Even the likes of United States would not also want to lose Nigeria. Because one thing most of you don't understand is the dirtiness that happened in Nigeria. Nigeria is so a very disgusting entity that she supplies hugely human hunger. A lot of human hunger extractions are happening in Nigeria and they're exported in the black market. So if you come to countries like India and other rest of and they, 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 they have the understanding that why they might not easily smuggle large human organs 
in a well-controlled and organized society that in Nigeria state they get it from any angle. Do you think they would want such an entity to fizzle out? Such an entity they get human organ at, as the design. Do you think a country that we are told that the United States is running three bio lab in Kaduna, in Lagos, and in Abuja? What United States is very careful to run in her own soil? She is running it in Nigeria. And of course, using Nigeria's environment and her people as a guinea pigs. Do you think a country like the United States would, you know, um, easily, without much demand and press, allow Nigeria to end? No. Because Nigeria is just a laboratory center. And of course, do you think a country like UK that her multinational companies operating in Nigeria, you know, extracting her resources unaccountably would want Nigeria to be? No. Also, if you look up north, where you have United Arab Emirates, you know, doing extracting gold in Zafara. And you know what Turkey is doing in Bronu, you know, Dandia, in Chad Basin. A whole lot of countries are just reaping the uncontrolled entity. So, to these countries, to these international actors or state actors, they understand that if you're the mining for self-determination is a right thing, is a just thing, is a pure project. They know that. But what they cannot do is to be on the forefront of campaigning for your self-determination. They won't do it because this is a system that is already favorable to them. Like I earlier highlighted. This is a system that is so destabilized, that lacks control, that is so polarized, that you can pick whatever you want to pick and get out. For information, most of you never heard that there was a, a ship that loaded Nigeria crude and left Nigerian sea, sea territories. Only was intercepted by Equatorial Guinea Navy. This is a country I'm talking about. This is a country you should understand how she is, you know, uh, a place of looting for a lot of actors. So when you don't understand all these things, when you don't understand the fact that you are challenging a whole lot of primordial powers, when you don't understand that any single day you are standing strongly in unison, you know, preaching for self-determination, you are knocking on the doors of these primordial powers, challenging their grip on this one. So, so these are some of the things people don't understand because from elementary level, people we are not exposed to history, people we are not exposed to political science. When I mean political science is not the highly filtered one, the irrational ones. Most people claim they study the, the university, in Nigerian universities. That is not what I'm, I'm talking about political science that is embedded with rationalization independent thinking, ability to raise questions. This is what we are talking about. So, owing to the fact that IPOB have stood on the ground 
to get her people out of the highly mesmerized system. Guess what? There is no any other tool or game they wish to play that, that what we call advanced psychological or advanced mental manipulations. And that is the stage we are. You see, um, people should understand that um, when you are demanding for a right thing, when you are demanding for a just cause, there are various ways the oppressor will want to stop you. There are various ways. The ways are multifaceted. There are numerous strategies. You see, most of us who think that everything is just black, then you stop talking about the effort. It's because you are the kindergarten level. Because as a black man, everything you see is money, money. So if you want to stop somebody, money. Money is the, to me, is the least strategy to apply. Because it's a common, it's, a, it's obvious, it's a common strategy, is you know, dictatable. But there are undetectable channels. There are covert manipulative or maneuvering approaches. People don't know. And these are applied every single day. So the issue of money as an attempt to destroy a building is gone. It's not working. It has never worked. Because the truth remains, you see, when, when we say that Mazina Mekano is really wise, deeply wise, you see, most people who don't even understand that, there are people who shout the Afra, who, who talk a whole lot of, who make a whole lot of noise, but they don't actually understand it. It's just like somebody claiming he can build. But he does not understand the structural design of what he wants to build. Definitely, he's going to make disaster. He's going to present a disaster as a building. That is exactly what has happened to most, you know, to most people. That is exactly what has happened to most people. Because in a in a in a deep parochial approach. They have analyzed IPOB from their very small world. And the, 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 you know, the destructive tendency or tendencies they expose themselves is because they believe that in as much as this is a movement of our people, that is easy for them to understand it. No. No, it's beyond Yes, it is found by a black skin fellow, which is Mazin Nambega. But the project is on black. Sorry for that. For those of us that that word might be highly offensive to. But the project is on black. On black. And that's why every single one of us who feels he has understood IPOB well. He has, he has, you know, in the world of our illusions, we feel we have, we have, we have a total understudy of the movement. And they don't lie to themselves. You find that really they get out of the system. They fizzle out. It's just a question of some period of time. They die off. They, they become so irrelevant. And you ask yourself, why is it that they cannot have a sound vision to run, sound separate vision. They find it difficult to separate themselves totally from talking about IPO because they, you know, it's it just like 
in a group, you are making impact. Then when you get out, you now realize that you are empty. So what are we trying to say? There are various approaches, mechanisms that we are deployed to stop high glory, but to not have help. And believe you me, the actors in question, either state or non state actor, are really, really panic. They are really, really concerned. Because they understand that IPV have successfully internationalized the project. The Biafran project is internationalized. What that implies is that the, the idea of you know, uh, giving it a media blockade, a media barricade, is no longer feasible. That is one. They have also realized that the idea of making the whole narrative to look as if IPOB is the belligerent group is no longer working. Because just check every single effort by the Nigerian police, by the Nigerian DSS, by the Nigerian military trying to, you know, link up IPOB with activities of criminals. Check how those projects failed to death years. International communities never bought that joke. They never subscribed to that. They never gave credence to, 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 you know, to those efforts, wasteful efforts to, you know, link up IPOB if, to Various criminal activities. When somebody steals a boat and is caught, then he's an ES and another rest of them. So now they have realized. I'm talking about the primordial. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about. You know, I'm not talking about those in government only. I'm talking about the powers that have been deciding the face of Nigerians. These powers could be found in UK, in London. They could be found in Washington, D.C. They could be found in Brazil. They could be found in every most cities of the earth. They are beginning to get worried. They are beginning to understand the efficacy of consistency of IPOB and how that is likely if no urgent action is taken, how that is likely going to end their business in this part of the world. And what are they doing now? And this is where I want you to you know, listen to me with a liberal mind. Listen to me with a rational mind. My submission might not be the ideal one. My submission might not be the perfect one. But you own yourself the responsibility to you know get yourself off the garment of sentiment and listen to what I want to say. So they are worried, they are concerned over the activities of IPOB, how IPOB is able to, you know, maneuver into the complex scenarios and the situations. And they felt if nothing is not done, definitely a lot of things are going to be done. For your information. Those of you, those of them, those of them you see seem to be backing P2B political drive. I'm talking about the likes of Obasanjo and uh, by extension some Western lobbyists and group. They are not doing that because they naturally want to do that. This is what most people don't understand. They are not doing that because they naturally want to. Before them, every single one of them 
is realizing to the fact that, you know, let me tell you something, and I want you to understand this. In, in Biafran Project, in Biafran Project, listen so that you understand. In Biafran Project, or should I say, there are two ideological, opposing ideological tribes. In Biafran land. Now, these two opposing ideological drives, they all agreed that there is exclusion, there is man marginalization, and there is dehumanization of the Biafran people. They all agreed. They are not denying it. Whether you see them in APC, those APC members of Biafra extraction, they know that there is marginalization, that they know there is exclusion. Whether you see them in PDP, they also agreed that they are wrong. Whether you see them in IPOP, they also, IPOP also agreed to the fact that there is exclusion, there is marginalization, and all this. Now look at where they two ideologies are divided. Now, the concept of IPOB, the ideological drive of IPOB is total emancipation. Outright emancipation of the marginalized, the excluded and dehumanized Biafran people out of the suppressive entity called Nigeria. This is the vision of IPO. This is what IPO wants. This is what IPO wants. Now, to the other group, they now believe, yes, we have seen this, uh, where is justice? You remember the popular mantra of uh, Obon Nyon, the former minister for science and technology. When he was shouting on podium, where where is justice? Where is just they know there there is injustice, but they now believe these are another group ideological drive. They now believe. Listen so that you understand. They now believe that yes, we are marginalized, but if we can walk ourselves into the political space. If we can be allowed to hold number one position in Nigeria, we believe that the equity, the concept of equity is granted. That is their own ideology. But IPOB is not desiring to attain whatever height in Nigeria because IPOB believes that the problem of that marginalization is ideological thing. That these people are already rooted, deeply rooted on the concept that you see these people will never allow them to preach. That is IPOB's interpretation. That's why IPOB is not interested. IPOB is not seeing the political movement or attainment of number one citizen of Nigeria as a solution to what she is pursuing. Because IPOB has what we call clear objective. IPOB is just like certain Jews who are in prayer 1917 Europe, or should I say, they are just like those Jews who we are, who we are in Europe before, you know, uh, the formation or the founding of State of Israel. You know, when you look at the Jews in Europe of this time, the pre-State of Israel Jews 
who were in, you discovered the, the same similar, uh, different ideological drive we are saying today. That was what some of them had. There were a group of them who were saying, we want total exit from Europe. We want to get out of, you know, uh, we want to get out of Europe. And there were also Jews, the mainstream Jews, permit me to use that word, in Europe, who believed that let there be establishment of commissions of inquiries. Let the Nazis, you know, compensate us for what they did to us, and let us move on in Europe. Let us be part of Europe, but let there be commission of inquiry. These are the likes of Ubuntu, no, and not the rest of them. The mainstream Biafras, who believe that if they were given a, just like the Jews were saying, let there be commission of inquiry, Commission of Inquiry, some of them were arguing that. Let them allow us to properly integrate. Let them allow us to attain any height we want to in Europe. They are mainstream Jews. The they, 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 they conservative Jews say no. Even though you allow us to be the church, you allow us to be the top politicians in Europe, we knew that the hatred they have against us is in DNA hatred. And for that reason, we want to have a homeland. And they began to that project. So what actually is happening contemporarily in Biafra now is two ideological drives. Those mainstream minds who believe that they Attainment of an evil man in the topmost political space of Nigeria, we, you know, solve the problem. But if you look deeply, you should ask them a question, a simple question. How far did the attainment of good luck a very Jonathan salvaged the plight of the Ijobs? I don't want to say Niger Delta from broad perspective, but let me narrow it to the Ijo nation. How did the emergence of Jonathan solve the Ijo question? In fact, most of you never understood. As a matter of fact, and a historical fact, on the process of Jonathan trying to achieve two projects, that would have, to an extent, solved the plight of the job people, and by extension, all you producing states or communities. Jonathan had a two projects that would have given a, a you know a, a kind of a damper hands on this. Is a job people or oil producing people, and by extension, Nigeria. One, he had what we call PIP, Petroleum Industrial Bill, and that project was that bill was heavily written, sponsored by Design Imadebu. Madeke, something like that. This is a former minister for petroleum that is still passing through uh, so called the EOC's investigations and all this. She sat down, got experts, and in that bill, the petroleum industrial bill, which has not been signed to tomorrow, that mean, you see, those who think they own Nigeria destroy that bill, make that bill to be so useless. In that bill, one of those things that we wanted to fight against was gas flaring. If you go to oil producing areas, the multinational oil companies are still flaring gas. That's why you see the Niger Delta region being the most contaminated region because of gas flaring. If you go to those oil company areas, you see 
there is this gas light, you see them, they are wasting. The bill wanted to force the oil companies to convert. But what they were wasting, what they, were, what they are wasting is resources. And apart from the wastage involved, they are also contaminating the environment of Niger Delta. Because those things you're flaring goes to the air and they breathe it. The people breathe it. That's why, ask anybody in the water, he wakes up in the morning, immediately he sneezes out. The thing he gets is a black substance coming out from his nostril. But they are living in a badly contaminated environment. So, through the petroleum industry, the multinational oil companies operating in the Niger Delta region were to be forced, just the way they do in Europe, in America and other, other parts of the world, to make sure that they don't flame those gas, rather, they should convert them to liquefied gas. And the nation will make profit from it instead of wasting it. Two, they don't contaminate the environment. Do you know what? These multinational oil companies fought good loss regime. They mobilized their international friends and blackmailed good loss government. And guess what? It was removed out of their ways. That is one thing. The next thing was the petroleum industrial bill wanted to return the power of oil well ownership to the host community against the northernization idea where these oil wells are owned by northerners. The bill wanted to return it to host community, that the host community should own their oil wells and certain remittance should be paid to them as it is applicable in Saudi Arabia, in UAE, in Qatar, in Oman, in Bahrain, in Kuwait, and other oil producing nations of the earth. The host communities are the primary benefactors of this natural assets. That was what the bill wanted to implement or initiate. Remember I told you it was not a new idea. It is obtainable in Saudi Arabia and a lot of countries. Now, those who own the oil wells in Nigeria mobilized their resources and did a vigorous campaign against Jonathan and get him on. You know, you see why I want to take the time to, to invoke the history of not too long is because most of you who shout obedience and logics seem to be suffering from low memory syndrome. You, 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 you are too weak in recalling events of less than 10 years because you are mentally dead when it comes to historical invocations. You, you, your, your brain is so weak to invoke historical activities of less than a decade. And that's why you keep shouting. Because if you have a high mental frequency, you will be asking objective questions and not fantasies, illusions, and jamborees. Most of you are doing. And tomorrow you will come back and start crying. And of course, we that have inculcated and embedded the wisdom of history in us, nothing shakes us. We cannot be heartbroken. We, we, we naturally don't get heartbreak or heartbreaks. Every single trend, IPOB member, of course, if I talk about IPOB member, I'm not talking about the on and off elements. 
cannot have a mental depression. Because we, we, we in fact, we are so sophisticated mentally that when you're speaking today, we invoke your statement of 10 years. We call it upon, thank God for internet. We, we help to guide you. We help to moderate you. We help to let you understand that you're not talking to fools. Because every single person has an antecedent. You have a historical antecedent. From the day you start crawling, that day you have opened a library for nature to document you. It's so sad that people in this part of the world are mentally weak to archive or call forth their so-called leaders, antecedents and archives. That is it. That is simply the way it is. And that's why somebody who write down a particular state will start telling you that he built the best city in Africa. And some fools will buy into that. They are buying into that because they have a very short memories. You know, people tell, tend to spin like to John. Yes. And that's why somebody will also come out and tell you he's going to turn the economy around. And the same person will tell you, you ask him what is his work. He tells you that he's a farmer or he's an animal husband. You ask him, your opening stock is hand. What was your opening stock? He tells you he started with 200 cows. And you ask him, what is your closing stock? As at the moment you're telling us you're going to turn the economy around. What was your closest stock? And the same person tells you that he started with 200 cows and he's ending with 200 cows. And you see the animals who just, hey, we talk to Sarando. Hey, he's a, he's a, he's an economic expert. He told you a static opening stock and a static closing stock. And you're jumping on. Then, four years later, you start to come and uh, you see them, when they get heartbreak, the next place they want to dump their nuisance, especially those of them from their front line, is that they start talking about IPO. That is just the way. When you see them get disappointed as a result of their irrational way of choice, then I cry, hey, what this people are saying is the right thing, I can't trust this fool again. Then, give the fool few months later before election, he suspends his brain, he forgets the, the depression he faced to, he, he forgets the disappointment. You see him running here and there, making noise again. If he doesn't tell you he's partified, he will tell you he's articulated. If he doesn't tell you he's articulated, he's tell you he's obedient. Because they are born into illusion. They believe on illusions, they believe on jamborees, on realistic pursuits. So, what am I trying to say? We are at a stage that there is high velocity of, you know, mind games, and I want each and every one of us to understand this. I want each and every one. Of us to understand it. Peter B is a good man, no doubt about it. Based on things I've had people said about him, people he assisted, some things he has done. But the truth is, Peter B cannot be an alternative for our freedom. That is the mistake, people. You see, people don't get it real. And the earlier you don't you get it real, the better for it. 
He's a nice man. We've heard wonderful things about, unlike those he's contending with. Unmatchably the best. But he can never be substituted. As in the project of our freedom can never be substituted to him or with him. Yes, after four years, you will start wondering what is the problem. Obasanjo today, yes, I respect him going to the father is a father, and he has also seen widely. Uh, he plays a whole lot of geopolitical qualities, especially within the African region and West African sub region. So he's influential. And for your information, most people don't understand that Obasanjo is heavily projecting into him. And I understand his concern, I understand his fears. You see, the likes of Obasanjo are coming to realize that. Application of force can never stop IPOB. In fact, that has sunk in him. Because one of those things IPOB has rubbished in the minds of millions of people, especially those in Connaught. Not everyone in Connaught hates IPOB as a matter of fact, because most of them understand that what we are fighting is a just cause. But those of them who felt the only thing they have is the instrument of force that crush. You remember the popular language of uh, former chief of army staff, General Brata, crush, crush. One thing IPOB have rubbish in the minds of them is that the application of force is ineffective to an ideology whose time has come. I believe we have proven and established that. Whether you want to hear about that or not, so it's inconsequential. I repeat, I believe we has proven that you answering a general, you being a general, has to, you being a general and unleashing terror and, you know, State clamp down on her has no business with where she's going. That she's sold out to her project. That you can threaten, you can apply, you can implement your threat. It's none of her business. That she keeps driving down her vision and her purpose. So because of that, most of them, like Papa Sanjo, like Abu Salam, like even IBB, I'm talking about the pro-Western ex-presidents. Talking about those ex-presidents that have deep contact with the Western powers. They are now beginning to realize that if nothing is done, that IPOB is going to win the remaining hearts. You know, I was trying to, you know, uh, analyze the different ideology, ideologies in the Afghan land. The ideologies who acknowledge that there is exclusion, there is marginalization, but they believe it shouldn't, it shouldn't be the way IPOB wants. There are those ideologies, you know. So, these guys are now beginning to realize that IPOB is likely to win the remaining minds. And let me tell you, for your information, one of those things IPOB have wonderfully done is the idea of presenting herself to the people acceptability. And you know, each time people recklessly are misguided, 
miscalculatively and stupidly. Of course, it's an advanced stupid, uh, stupidity, advanced one. Each time people don't understand the importance or the reason why, I will be wrong a friendly or a, a friendly policy to her people and a hostile policy to the intruding jihadism. People don't understand it. People don't understand it. You see, when so many of us think that, especially so many of us in diaspora, because the movement is meant by women, you know, when so many of us think that the leadership or by extension of our leader tries to wave down factors he believes can add up to the suffering of our people. Like when he says, sit at home should not be Okay, let's do it any time our leader is going to court. And some people were in diaspora, you know, we, I'm sorry to say this because I have a whole lot of diaspora viewers, but the truth is that most, some of us are naive, some of us are very selfish. And so many of us in diaspora, they go to their work, they return back, all they do is they log into uh, internet and say, shut down the Biafra plan for one minute. Ignorant. And they fail to understand that what you're fighting is for the people. And any day the people feel that you're adding to their pains, you're adding to their horrible experiences, they will delegitimize. They will withdraw that their support. Or when some people say, ah, um, Mobilize ESN. ESN are supposed to be in the bush against the terrorists. Mobilize them on the street, let them, you know, do this. It's myopic way of thinking. So, because IPV have carefully and intelligently managed this, the likes of a just believe that if nothing is done, the remaining people, the Afrans who are sit, still sitting on fence, We finally cross it to IPOB project, and that is the end of Nigeria. So, do you know the titles they came in? Obasanjo is not alone in this project for your information. Britain is part of this project, and other countries. They now believe that we just have to do everything possible. They first of all approach PDP to give the ticket to P2B, which um, the group of fellows felt, you know, they can't do it. They denied him ticket together. And he was encouraged by these powers that be to pick a Labour Party and run under the Labour Party. So why are all these? You see, what uh, most people don't understand is that we are in the era of these primordial powers trying to do everything to see if they can substitute our freedom with attainment of Nigeria presidential seat. These are these are two things. And for information, for your information, P2B is you know getting sympathy because some of them believe that that is the only way to quell the agitation. Yes. Some of us, the likes of Obasan Abu Salam and other people, including IBB, forget all these things. A lot of things are going to happen. They are going to move a whole lot of their boys. Let the campaign start. There will be mass cross campaigning from BDP, from APC to the level. All these things are targeted at weakening, impossible, put into a stop the agitation for Biafra. 
And let me tell us, for those of us who don't understand history, why should or who see things from one perspective. Fit to be imagines has no business with what we are doing. He can imagine. That is one business. We have had cases. The time will not permit me to invoke instances where we have people of agitating side being appeased. It's a kind of politi politics of appeasement. That is what you're seeing happening. That is, uh, yes, we are, uh, there, is, there is this existing fact that Peter B is sound, his antecedents are really clean, and he's a, a sellable candidate. But beyond that, it's an effort by some individuals to appease. But that is not a good appeasement, because I always tell people, the question you should ask yourself, how is P to P? All these things are said he is going to do. How is he going to achieve it? Under such badly structured system. Because so many of you are jumping up and down, felt that four years is 40 years. And that was exactly what happened to Goodman. Niger Delta, Niger Delta, resource control, all they gave them power. Four years, and he thought he was going to make another eight years in order to consolidate. They get him off the way. And you have to think about it. You also have to think about that. So, what am I trying to say? At this moment, you know, so many of us who don't understand issues, we carelessly expect the leadership of IPOB to, to keep talking about development, uh, political development. It's, it's inconsequential. In fact, it is a height of miscalculation. If the leadership will start talking about political development, it makes no sense. Rather, the leadership should be focused talking about issues of the project for self-determination. Pursue because the voting is diversionary. Immediately you, you are taken out of your area of discussion and you are given another topic to discuss. That is mission creed. You have lost the debate, you have lost the discussion. So, it also matters. In fact, the battle is going to be severe. That is what people have not understood. You see what Obasan Obasa meant Abu Salam and Baka today in Niger State to market P2B. He also met IBD to market P2B. And let me tell you, the likes of Buhari and Kabat are not finding that movement. A funny one. They are not joking with that. And of course, they are in power. They are going to deploy every single resources to prove to Obasan John and the rest of them that they are sitting. Come and watch. So that's why when I look at people, you know. I'm not against anybody political trial. If you're obedient, good for you. If you're so-called bat batified, keep batting. If you're articulated, I have no issue with you. In as much as you respect the fact that I am canified. I have no business. In as much as you, you owe me that respect of my own ideological drive, I have no business with you. But, I, you know, when I see people playing a whole lot of entertainment in the name of political movement, I laugh. Because you are going to contend with a cruel government, a government who never addressed you in Lake Tokate. 
but choose to use military deployment to assign your quest. This is a government you are meant to confront with. So it's beyond entertainment and, uh, you know, and not dress up. People should understand that. So, instead of asking or playing a jungle game, people should ask for the right thing. And what is the right thing? Demand for referendum. Then those who want to come together and form a united Nigeria should be by plebiscite, by the choice of the people. Any Thing aside that it's just like serving a serving an old wine on a new glass pot. It's as simple as that. No matter how nice Lady Arabia was, was frustrated by the fundamentals. No matter how nice good luck was. He was so mesmerized. What is Niger Delta like today? Nothing. So no matter how nice will be is also, four years will come. And most of you will ask him, what next? So you don't solve a bad building by patching. No. When a building has a structural problem, you don't salvage that looming disaster by amending. It doesn't make sense. You, 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 you salvage the looming disaster by outright demolition. When you do a try demolition, then you can begin a right. And that is exactly the solution. I always say it. The solution of Nigeria is dissolution. Dissolve the entity with a horrible structural design. Then, a new start. Because, you see, most people who, are, who felt oh, it's, a, it's going to take a whole lot of process and all that, the truth is, people should learn. In 1979, United Arab Emirates, I want to use that country as a case study, the difference of having a good structural design and a bad structural design. In 1979, if I'm not mistaken, United Arab Emirates, most of you don't know that, is a conglomeration of seven Emirates. What you see today in UAE is a coming together of, there are seven Emirates, they have their different Emirates, just like you said, seven regions that they agreed to come together. There was a consensus. Through the instrumentality of consensus, they said, let us unite. And they spelled out how they are going to run themselves. And they said, every region should manage what she is known for. That is exactly what is replicant in United Arab Emirates. You have Charger, you have Dubai, and you have other so every single emirate is known for a specialty. Every single emirate is known for a certain thing. But they say, let us come together and answer United Emirates, UAE, in 1979. In the same 1979, Nigeria was forcefully fused together. No structural design, no structural stipulation, 
no certain modus of operandi, no defined charter. In 1979, these guys have already established a charter. They have established a, you know, a, 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 a memorandum of understanding of how they are going to respect each one's way of doing things. Each emirate, you are known for this, do this, but because we want a formidable defense, that's why we are coming together. In December 1979, Nigeria disregarded charter disregarded structural design, disregarded moral of understanding. And those people as at then who we are calling for, say, let us have a, a redesign, let us design a structural system. Let us have a charter. Some people as at 1979 were saying, it's going to take us a whole long time to scatter and start rebuilding. They were managing it. Look at, they managed it in 2020. In 2020, UAE that confronted their challenge in boldness, not minding the cost. In 2020, one unit side of their business known as Emirates, Emirates is their national capital, is having in Nigeria 200 and something million dollars. Unrepatriated home. Emirate alone, Emirate alone, have her 200 and something million dollars stashed, trapped in Nigeria. Where one state, a state, a state, a state in Nigeria cannot boast of such a savings. This, this is Emirate to trust a unit, a business unit. Of UAE, just like a business unit, have 200 and something million US dollars trapped in Nigeria. Not other countries where they fly, this is just in Nigeria, trapped. And a state in Nigeria, a state cannot boast of that amount in savings. You see, People don't understand the importance of doing things are right. When you do something half a subject, when you do something carelessly, you are not just only going to suffer it, your children on board will suffer it. Does that make sense to you? Because in the 70s, they were bold to design a workable system for them. And Nigeria, Felt to take that bold step in the 70s. In 1979, they launched Emirate. The same time, Nigeria launched Nigeria Airways. Today, what they started is having a money that no, in fact, some states in Nigeria cannot boast of. Why Nigeria Airways? Fiber and ethnic struggle destroyed it. In fact, in 2022, that Emirate is saying to Nigeria, we are not going to fly in your airspace again, given Nigeria condition. In 2022, Nigeria is saying they are going to borrow aircraft to start national career. You see, people don't understand. You see, there is no shortcut to success. It's as simple as that. There is no shortcut to success. Why we are spending our resources, our time, fighting for self-determination, but we know it's better we, we suffer it today and have a future for our children. Or not really. All of us would have just joined into the political bandwagon. Maybe I will be writing for one politician, writing an article for one politician, promoting that politician. Or if I want to make a video, I will be making a video for one politician, discussing wonderfully about the thief. Even though where he stole, I will say no, it was accidental discharge stealing. Then, what I'm doing in 2022, maybe 
In 2052, my children will start suffering the consequences of my miscalculation. And that is exactly what is going to confront each and every one of us living today. It's as simple as that. You can deny the reality as much as you can, if you like. Nigeria denied it in the 70s. You can, you can downplay realities as much as you can. You can grammatize over it. One thing that is undeniable is the fact that every action has a result. If you act rightly, you get right result. If you act wrongly today, you get wrong result. It's as simple as that. The same thing applies to other progressive nations. You see, I, I laugh at so many people. I laugh at so many people. If you understand, if you understand, uh, if you understand nature and the world, You, 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 you will have no reason to, you know, let me check how many minutes we have spent so far. We have spent over one hour and 30 something minutes and 36 minutes. So we will be rounding up in a minute. So these are some of the things we must understand. So never you think there is a shortcut. To a better future. Never you think. If anyone talks you into that, it's an aberration, simply an aberration, a hoax. Absolutely. So, what is most important is for each and every one of us to understand is that the quest for self determination is a strong quest. The pathway for it is not an easy one. Anything that leads you into Stupid flexibility will lead you to future bleeding. It's as simple as that. So we are not against anybody's political drive. It's sacrosanct in as much as you also respect ours. But the truth is, the end will justify the means. From here, I want to say good night. Do have a very nice moment. And we okay, can preserve us, preserve our leader, preserve the movement, and at the end, we will smile. Thank you from here and bye.